What's going on, everybody? I decided I wanted to really show you guys how I actually am building part of my Iron Man suit. Um, specifically the skin, or the plating, or the... Uh, someone commented and said shell. Um, all good names. Essentially, I'm putting flat aluminum 1 8 inch onto the CNC machined um, quarter inch material. So that's what's sitting there right now. And what I'm currently doing is how I always start off making the the skin or whatever we're going to call it. Let's call it skin for now because I think that kind of works the best because I've generally been using biological terms to explain um, how everything works. All the parts of the exoskeleton are named after biological terms. So we'll call it skin for now. Um, so I'm using a pencil there to draw in on a piece of paper roughly where the, um, the parts should go. And this is something I generally do um, whenever I'm working on these parts. I always draw them out, and it, it doesn't work perfectly. It doesn't get uh, everything exactly perfect, but it gets it pretty close, and it get, definitely gives me a place to start. And then uh, usually what happens is I end up with parts that are a little bit oversized, um, which is fine because I can cut pieces off. And normally I would say I can't stretch metal, but I actually can stretch metal when you're forging. So you'll see me do that in a spot in a second because... Um, that's actually necessary for me to to make this work. So now I'm just transferring over the, the parts. Um, I have that one main piece there that I was working on, and then you can see I also have some smaller pieces. Um, I ended up not using one of them. Um, I only ended up using the larger one, but I cut those out anyway. Um, so I'm transferring them over to the thinner aluminum. This is 1 8 inch aluminum. Um, still flat stock. Um, they had a nice piece of flat stock there. Uh, when I bought bought my aluminum. So I'm using a, um, a set of power shears that I got from Harbor Freight. I really love Harbor Freight tools. You can get the DeWalt equivalent of this um, power tool, which is a nice tool. It's got a battery. It's battery driven, which is definitely, I definitely prefer to have a battery instead of having to plug things in. Um, it's $240 for the DeWalt tool. I got this tool for about 60 bucks, which is awesome. Um, I'm a huge fan of Harbor Freight. For that reason, you can really get stuff that if you were buying like at a big box store or on Amazon, you couldn't find tools. Um, not really sure how Harbor Freight stays in business. There was a, a saying inside of um, Skunk Works uh, that the last 80% of a product, or the last 20% of a product like a refinement of a product, so let's say the the Blackbird, um, the last twenty percent of that will require eighty percent of the work. So they essentially stopped before they got to that um, that last uh, twenty percent. And uh, so this these shears work pretty good on this material, but it's a little bit thick for it. So what you're seeing me go in there with a pair of tiny handheld bolt cutters and cutting off the curls because as the curls curl back onto the uh, the shear jaws, the, the front of the shears, they actually stopped me from being able to push the material forward. So it's a bit cumbersome. Um, you know, if I had like a, probably the best way to do this would be like a giant, giant bandsaw, but I don't have one of those. Um, so now I'm just cleaning up the corners here with a uh, angle grinder. Got to get those vertical lines. I'm a uh, angle grinder artist, if you will. Um, and then this is one of my favorite tools. Uh, that burr is a little bit too heavy to get off, but everywhere else it's working. This is one of my favorite tools, and when I build a um, a apron for my shop to wear, which I'm going to do at some point, I'm going to add that tool directly in. Now we're heating up the metal. Um, and so we're going to do something called annealing, and I'm going to kind of walk you through how to do it. Uh, so I've drawn on with sharpie there onto the uh, the material and I got this um, from um, an episode of Adam Savage's show uh, with Terry English and in order to anneal it you got to bring it up to a certain temperature and then you have to quench it kind of like you do with steel um, and the proper temperature to do that at is until the marker disappears so it's a perfect thing with that now when you do this with steel it creates something called masonite which is a hardened version of steel 
um, if it's a carbon steel. So the crystalline structure gets locked, it gets locked into a really loose crystalline structure. So the crystals, since it's not cooling down slowly, the crystals don't have enough time to form. And when you do that with steel, it makes it harder, but when you do it with aluminum, it makes it softer. And I'm not a chemist and I don't really know why that is, but that's what happens. So I make it softer, I anneal it so that I can um, work it easier on the anvil. And now I'm just blowing it off, gotta make it dry so it doesn't rust my table, which is just mild steel. So now I'm on to shaping this, and um, I found the best thing is just a light uh, rubber mallet for this. And I really left in a lot of this video because I wanted you guys to really look and see. It, it gives a good explanation of how long it actually takes to hammer this out. And you'll see me going back and forth and checking, and you'll hear me using some grinders. Um, I think right here, yep, you can hear the grinder running. And, you know, like, if you watch the Iron Man movies, it's, like, you know, it sounds awesome that he's, like, you know, hitting the anvil um, to make the uh, the the Mark I in, in the cave, and it's, like, bang, bang, bang. But you only see, like, three hammer blows. But in reality, it takes a lot more than that to really get the, the parts to work. And uh, this part in particular um, really gave me a lot of trouble. I had to, uh, um, to really work on it a lot, and I ended up actually changing part of it um, because, uh, which we're going to see in a second, because it wasn't quite working for me. But this one took a lot of persuasion to really get get where it is and this is a really good demonstration of uh, how much time it takes to actually get get that done and how much work is going into each and every part that you see on the suit um, not just the machining and stuff but just even making these more simpler in quotes uh, part so here I am cutting this in half because um, I could not get it to fit so I needed to, to take out kind of a dimension in order to get it to, to fit because I was just having some trouble um, and I'm not, you know, that much of an expert at this, uh, so I, I really needed to work, or I needed to, to make it a little easier to work by not having as many compounding angles. And then here I am working with a, a steel mallet, and what that actually does, I'm doing it on the horn, is actually um, stretches out the metal and makes it a little bit uh, longer, um, because like I said, the part wasn't fitting perfectly. And um, you can do that with the, the steel mallet because it's a lot heavier and it makes it thinner, but it actually makes it longer and that'll allow me to fill in a gap. Here I'm trimming off a little bit off the top. Like I said, these parts come off a little bit um, big um, on occasion, so which is fine. So I'm cutting it off. I'm having a hell of a time with it too. Uh, but I, I finally got it off there and that just makes it fit a little bit better because that part was sticking up over the top. Uh, doing a little brushing, which I don't do a whole lot of. Um, I, I don't find I have too much trouble getting to the... Uh, the oxide layer on aluminum, and I'm also cleaning it, which I'm doing less of um, now. And uh, the reason I do less of that is, um, if you watch like any YouTube video, they talk about, or I've talked to welders and stuff, and, and anyone who says that you should be welding aluminum, he says like cleanliness is next to godliness. And the reason for that is you get these this black stuff; they call it uh, uh, pepper in your welds. And uh, I've just found I did a few of them on the stake. I forgot to clean them, and I found that just wasn't happening for me. So I essentially took it out of my workflow because it's time-consuming. Um, and I have a lot to do, so I actually took it out. Um, but I went ahead and did that and cleaned these parts because they were kind of covered in grease because this part was assembled at one point. But I clean all my parts when they um, they come off the machine with uh, kitchen soap, and I found that's enough. Just ran a tack there, um, and I, I usually run my tacks with some filler wire because uh, they like to move. Oh, that part moved, by the way. I'm sure if you caught that, but uh, you can go back it up if you want. But that part shifted on me, but that was fine. I was able to push it back into place because I had a large moment arm on it. Doing another tack. I don't know if I put a, um, I use filler wire on this part or not, but uh, I almost burned my hand. Um, but I find my my tacks crack if I don't use filler wire. Now I'm welding, and one thing to notice here is I'm not welding every single. It's I'm highly tempted to weld every single part of this because it's like the world's most awesome. Uh, welding project. It's so much fun. And I've had people comment and say, that, like, it looks like so much fun. And it is. It's so much fun to go through and, and weld this crazy thing. But I have to uh, refrain and, and keep myself from over-welding it. Because if I over-weld it, it will uh, warp on me. And um, the reason that it does that is because when you have a... I'm making another piece here, by the way. Um, but the reason that it does that is uh, as... It, um, it's my favorite tool, um, again, so I'm, like I said, if I make an apron, I'm going to have that um, a pocket for that deeper tool on my apron because I use it all the time. It's one of my favorite tools. I like it more than files for this kind of stuff. Doing some fit-up check there, by the way, uh, really important. I do a lot of this. I didn't get a whole lot of it on video, but I do a lot of it. 
And anyway, what I was saying about the, the welding is that if I over weld it, it's going to cause the, the parts to warp. And um, if you look at like a, like, you know, professional weld somewhere, if you're out, I don't know, wherever you might be, and you're looking at the, the welds, you'll see that there's like a, like, let's say you're used to looking at something like on a building, there's like a 12 foot weld, um, 12 foot like bar that's welded to something. You'll see like an inch weld or a two inch weld and then like five or six inches of like no weld. And then you'll see another inch or two weld of weld and then you'll see like five or six inches of no weld. Um, and there I'm using an angle grinder to make sure my fit up is good. Fit up is really important um, as well as you know, getting rid of burrs and stuff. But uh, anyway, you know, that, that keeps it, because if you were to weld that entire part all the way through, it would really cause the, the part to, to really warp on you. And even, even if it's a big, bulky part that you're putting on there, it would definitely still do that. So um, here we are at another angle, I think welding another piece on, and uh, again, starting with tacks. And um, I normally start with a tack, and then um, we'll put a, a bead on top of it, just a single bead. Um, and then this part, as the, as the other side cooled, it pulled off, um, so I put that uh, vice grip clamp on there, which I'm, I'm a fan of doing, um, to keep that uh, the fit up good. And then I welded, and then these parts I really welded pretty much all the way through, um, because I couldn't get them on the top and the bottom, I welded them all the way through on the side, so hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me at all. Um, even though I don't necessarily clean my parts a whole lot after I, I wash them, I do wash all my parts with uh, soap. Um, I'm definitely a fan of being comfortable. You really do need to be comfortable, and that's something that people say. Didn't get that gap right there. Um, it was getting towards the end of the night, and I was hungry, and there was food being made, and my girlfriend was coming into town, so I didn't quite finish that, but I will finish that in the future. Um, but you can see it really does have a pretty pretty cool look, and most of my welds pretty good. There's definitely some ugly ones at the front there you just saw, but there's some... My welds, for the most part, look pretty good, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't be Iron Man without a few bad welds. This is the uh, shank, the lower part of the suit, and... Um, uh, you, I've already I've did this at an earlier time, and um, you can see kind of how the rest of the suit is going to start to look as it comes together, and it's really quite intimidating. I really like the way the inside looks. You can see the, uh, the machined parts there, but then on the outside you get this kind of rougher look of the, the hammered out um, aluminum, and uh, there they are stacked together, and you'll get an idea of kind of how the entire suit is going to look when this thing is done, um, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty pretty badass looking in it. It has a, a rough look to it, but it is, you know, it is the Mark I. Um, and it's a lot of fun to build and actually see these parts coming together. And it's getting really heavy too. I may actually switch to a thinner gauge um, when I get a new sheet because it's, I'm a little bit worried about how heavy it's going to get, but it'll be cool. Nice and heavy. I mean, it's pretty badass that way. Looks good. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.